Okay, everyone, so we are going to get started here. We're kind of going to get into history's beginnings, if you will. It's kind of, in a way, or, you know, it's, it's kind of hard to see. You, you'll, you'll figure this out. So let's start with a little bit of an intro to history, as I have it in quotes, because we're going to talk about this a lot throughout the year. And here's my little quote. So many people tend to talk about history as 100% inequivocal fact. However, we just can't do that. Even things from as recent as a decade ago can have lots of controversy. I try to use the phrases we think or we believe. I like to fancy myself a historian. To discuss what evidence can tell us, the most important thing you can do from this point forward is to keep an open mind and look at every possible side of the, the facts that we are discussing. History is not perfect. Facts are often debatable. So let's see how much we can learn. Now, we are going to start at early Homo sapiens, but I want to give you a little walk through evolution here. And this is just kind of a, a diagram, if you will, to, to show, you know, from our original beginnings way back when, as many as, you know, almost six million years ago. This is a newer um, fossil find, uh, Ardipithecus remitus cadaba. Um, but the one that we really know is um, Australopithecus afarensis. Um, this is the famous Lucy artifact, and we can talk that more in class. Uh, the first time we definitely are sure that humans stood up, and for the short, short, and we can talk about it in class, the, well, the reason we stood up was one, climate change, and two, grass. Now, man would continue to develop over time until this guy right here, Homo erectus. Homo erectus is really, really important because it is that wonderful creature that could uh, control fire. Fire may be the single most important technological advance in human history. Yeah, you have all of these other things, and don't get me wrong, they're all good, but fire was crucial. One of the biggest things we could do for the short short is that we used fire to cook food. One, because it's delicious. But by cooking food, we released greater nutrients. Don't give me the paleo diet stuff. You need to cook things. And as a result, with more nutrients, we got bigger brains that were developed. And eventually, Homo sapiens had the biggest of them all. So fire, real crucial. But let's get to the big thing, which is the arrival of Homo sapiens around 200,000 years ago. If I look on the bottom here, 200,000 years ago, man is from Africa. Homo sapiens, now that is not quite us. We are evolutionary slightly different. Um, modern humans are known as Homo sapiens sapiens. But in 1997, we discovered the Herto site in Ethiopia, um, which is right here, as you can see, which was a site that we seemed to find by a freshwater lake. Um, we found what we believe to be crocodile and hippo bones, um, which perhaps they were used to eat. We've also found some human skulls. Um, and other um, or and skeletons as well as you can see the skull on the right um, and you can see it looks beat up but it doesn't look too much different than us um, and what this site was crucial in telling us and what the the fossil finds were crucial in telling us was one that homo sapiens are probably around 200,000 years old or so and two that without a fact as of, without a doubt as of right now man is from africa okay and that's really important and there's all these other different types of beliefs and things like that and i'll, I'll tell you one a little bit later but the fact of the matter is is that man is from africa and this ethiopia uh region or even in parts of the sudan is probably where we originated from now, how long do we stay in Africa? Once again, the evidence is tough to find. You don't have burials or things like that. If a Homo sapien you know, died, he just kind of got left there. Um, we see anywhere from 125,000 to 50,000 years ago, we left Africa. Now, I know that's a big number, but we have found sites like, for instance, down here in modern-day South Africa, if you look at the mouse on the right, um, here I am, from about 90,000 years ago. There is some evidence that right over here in the Arabian, modern day Arabian Peninsula, because way back when the Red Sea wasn't quite there yet, that could be 125,000 years old. We definitely know by 50,000 years ago we were out. 
and then probably by 80,000 years ago, we were into India. So that's why we have this big thing. Also, around 200,000 years ago, we have what is referred to as mitochondrial Eve. When you analyze the mitochondria of um, all humans, they are ultimately linked. And so our ultimate ancestor that we know of was in all likelihood a woman who lived in modern-day Tanzania approximately 200,000 years ago. Now, when we leave, okay, Asia is first. There was a land bridge to modern-day Arabia. The weather was quite different then. So from 100,000 to 75,000 years ago, they break out. By about 74,000 years ago, uh, Jualalapuram in India is a site that we have found that has tools and a variety of other things that were known by Homo sapiens to use. And then in Tampai Ling in Laos, we have about 60 to 40,000 years ago, and then we have Australia 60 to 50,000 years ago. And if we look at a map, again, you see I'll talk about Europe separately. So we have all of Africa. Okay, here's our original. So jumping over into Arabia, then you see into India, then to modern day China, and then over in here to the rest of Asia. Now, China is very interesting because some people theorize that man started there. And what we do have in both China and in Indonesia, we have found pre-humans, um, similar to Homo erectus or Cro-Magnon man, as some others are referred to as, um, one is actually called Java man, that independently did seem to develop. However, they are not Homo sapiens, okay? Um, what's weird and what you got to get used to, and I'll be explaining more of this in a moment, is that you're used to one type of human. Yes, people can talk about races and whatever nonsense you want to talk about, but the fact of the matter is, is we are all Homo sapiens sapiens. <coughs> Excuse me. Well, 200,000 years ago, that is actually not the, the deal. There are other people out there. Now, the next step that we took was moving into Europe. This was a little bit harder. Um, these sea routes were harder to get over. Um, the Mediterranean is quite large. So it wasn't until about 50,000 years ago that we got over there. And it was cold, okay? We would see the development of heavy clothing and humans really um, increasing the use of clothing. Um, but here's something different. We were not alone. We had these rivals to us, and they were the Neanderthals. If you look on the right, you see an ancient Homo sapiens skeleton and a Neanderthal skeleton, or Homo sapiens Neanderthalus. So you can see just by the um, Latin name of it is that we are very much related. We lived at the same time. They were primarily located in Germany and Europe, as well as North Africa and the Middle East. Um, they had the same tools as us, uh, arrows and fish hooks and jewelry and spears. They were bigger than us. They were probably stronger than us, although we had a little bit of a bigger brain. One very interesting thing here is that what we may have gotten from them is the first ever burial that we have found goes back to, you know, 50,000, 60,000 years ago in the Shanadar Caves in Iran. We see a body that was deliberately placed and arranged. We found evidence of flowers being placed by the body. And some people like to say that perhaps this is the evidence of belief of an afterlife because why would you bury someone? Which is one of the reasons why we primarily bury people today or at least have some type of funerary type thing. And these guys lived around the same time of us. Now, the question is, did they die out, or did we kill them, or did we interbreed? Those are the three things. Evidence, we believe, tells us that we probably were very hostile to our cousins, because they were very much cousins. Now, through some genetic testing, it is believed that some of our DNA can be as much as 5% of Neanderthal DNA, so we do think there was definitely some interbreeding there, but more likely than not, we pretty much killed all of them, or they, which result, or the rest of them then died out, and so again, early on, we're setting a wonderful tone. Um, and then the last group to get set up would be the Americas. The Americas were populated because 
people were able to walk over from modern-day Siberia through an area called Beringia. Now, Beringia no longer exists. During the last ice age, the Bering Strait was covered by land, and we believe this is the route that people took about 14,000 years ago. Now, what's very weird is as humans come over, most of the large animals are not necessarily hunted out of existence. They leave. This is going to be a big deal. We are going to talk about it quite a bit um, because that's going to mess up the Americans. Now, one of the oldest settlements we found is near Monteverde in Chile. It's about 12,000 years ago, and if you look on the right here are two pictures of Monteverde. It's in a peat bog, which is actually... Um, saved quite a bit of it. Um, we found structures, uh, we found tools, we found footprints. However, something very interesting we're taking a look at is there's possible evidence that there could be a lower settlement that goes back as early as 31,000 years ago. Now, commonly, it would say that the Americas were populated around 15 to 14,000 years ago. This would more than double the time in which people got over here. That's going to be a big deal if that is indeed confirmed. However, the other interesting aspect of the Americas are the first main people we see besides Monteverde, which are the Clovis people. If you look over here on your right, we see all these little um, dots. These are Clovis settlements. It was named after the first site in which these people were found in Clovis, New Mexico. They're all over North America. They have all these tools. Some of these settlements had up to 60 people in it, which is incredibly huge. Hunter-gatherers are only normally 20 to 30. Now, the reason I have a mystery here is if you see these wonderful spear points, these are really, really fancy. There is a theory out there that somehow these people came actually from Europe. They came from over here that during the last ice age, they kind of sailed over in little boats and were able to populate this area. Now, we haven't been able to confirm it. All that we actually have are the similarity in tools from the Europeans to these ancient Americans. But nonetheless, we're over and everywhere. And so by 15,000 years ago, we win. By 15,000 years ago, it's just Homo sapiens. So the question is, why us? Why, why did we pull this off? Well, I got a few things. One, we have bigger brains. Bigger brains, you can use more brains, you can adapt. Two, better language. Um, in Homo sapiens, our larynx or the voice box dropped. It's lower in our throat which allows us to have more sophisticated language with our larger brain, which allows us to pass down information that allows us to succeed. Um, we had better and more effective tools. We were very, very creative. And the other big thing that we could do more so than anyone else is we can adapt to the environment. If we find ourselves in a desert, we make changes. If we find ourselves in some type of crazy rain-filled area, we can adapt. A jungle, a forest. And that's going to be crucial is how man adjusts the environment. Not necessarily how we adjust to the environment, which we do do, but we also physically will change the environment, which for the most part, aside from maybe like a beaver, no one else really does. We also have this ability to build shelters and protect ourselves. But in the end, you have this I, I, I say desire because humans develop this desire to conquer the world, and indeed we do. And, and that's all that takes place in the last 200,000 years. All right, so we're going to talk about it in class. Make sure you follow the, the correct assignment that I have for this, and I'll see you guys soon.